It was my second day in Texas. On the way out of Bartlett, they took me to a Lutheran church. It was a beautiful church. Stained glass windows, white marble high altar, a very unusual baptismal font for babies, upon which was written in German, Suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid it not, for of such is the kingdom of God. I was down front and I turned to look back and behold, I saw a beautiful organ. But what thrilled me more, someone was sitting on the organ bench. He turned and he looked at me and I said, are you going to play? Yes, I am, he said. Then I realized they had had him there for my coming. One of the finest organs in the state of Texas, built by one of his acquaintances. This gentleman had been the Lutheran pastor there some years before. But instead of leaving the community after his service was over, he stayed. Played for the Methodist Church for a while, but went back to this beautiful organ, one of the finest, built in the old European style. I said, Oh, wonderful. And he began to play. Immediately I recognized Bach. Somebody told him. It was a work called Fantasy. It was beautiful. Beautiful. Just beautiful. He was a man much like our own Walter. And he had commensurate gifts. He's also a most superb photographer. He's an artistic photographer. I've only seen one man in the United States that, that exceeded his work. This is one of the finest I've ever seen. When he finished, he came down. We were on our way to Salado to one of the most famous restaurants in the world, the Stagecoach Inn, and on the Waco to the Browning Institute, which was to be a great treat for me, for uh, Carol, Tony's wife, majored in English and had studied in that institute. But as the man came down, I saw something very tender in his eyes. And I began to share how we'd traveled in more than 30 foreign countries and how thrilled I was with his playing of Bach and how excellent his artistry, even as Catherine's. Catherine's was tonight. And how wonderful the organ. But I noticed that when he turned, he said, not knowing what I was, it was fine that he called me a Methodist. You Methodists make this thing sound better than it ordinarily does. For Sunday, it did not sound as good. And they're a revived Lutheran church. They sing like the old Germans. They sing with great gusto, great enjoyment. 200 in the, the village of Bartlett is a big church. But yet he said, you Methodists, make this organ sound different. She really sounds in tune today. It was the Spirit of Jesus. For as he played, we wept. We wept because of what we felt. We felt not only gratitude in our heart for so beautiful a music. We wept because we heard a man's soul. For he himself had lost him, his gifts in the gifts of Bach. And such beauty is seldom heard. I shared... And when I said, you know, we travel the world, we don't try to proselyte anybody, but we share the love in Jesus, the love of Jesus in two languages, one, music, and the other, love. And I said, it's recognized and appreciated by most all men. A nodding response, I thought, was adequate. By the way, I said, Garland, if you can come be with us next fall, we'd like to have you give us an organ concert at Scott Depot. The thrill that went through that. See, Martha, they don't know the background. They don't know the hurt of the man. They don't know the disappointment. They don't know the heartache. But he looked at me. 
That's how we got Bob, you know. And I said, Garland, we'll pay all of your expenses and that of your wife's. He looked at me. Well, he said, I just might do it. First rate, talented organist. And then we left. They told me the story later. I couldn't tell it all. It wouldn't be right to tell a man's hurts and disappointments. Suffice my capsule to say, there was a man whom somehow trouble came and he no longer could be pastor. But he's a man that decided to stay an artist, an excellent technician, many gifts, and he became a farmer and he stayed with the people. I thought, a farmer? An organist? Good. Good. It touches my heart. Oh, good. But you know, it all began when I arrived at the airport at Austin. For to my delight, there was persons there I didn't know was going to be there. In the first place, Bob Bunker was off all week. He switched with uh, Leroy's wife, Betty. So he was off all week. There was Bob, there was Susanna, and there was Tony and Carol and little Jill and Philip. And there was Don. Don Swartner. Do you remember Don? I found him on the back seat here. I didn't know that he'd come with the Texas group. When I came in the auditorium, when they came the first time with Carol and I believe with Tony, I just saw this young man dressed in blue jeans, beard, long hair, sort of upbeat style, you know, most contemporary. And I saw his eyes and I rushed right over to him and I said, oh, I said, let me love you. I didn't know who he was. And I loved him. What I didn't know was that was his step into the kingdom of God. For you remember how I called him forward and said, I want you to meet this young man. When I look into his eyes, I see so many wonderful things. I see a love of Jesus. He'd been all over the world searching for peace. He found peace in India and he thought to stay, but he couldn't find love. He found it that day in this place. His mother, his father, who's a successful, typical Texas ranger, except he's very tender-eyed, very tender-hearted, probably the most tender-hearted Texan I have ever met. He weeps about all the time. Had paid his ticket, not knowing why, only to find out later it was the hand of providence, for his son stepped in the kingdom of God in this place. Years ago, he lived in a tree house. His father has plenty of money. They farm a lot of land. But he was trying to get away from whatever was running the earth. He's an organic farmer. He's a man of talents. He's a man of great abilities. And finally, they persuaded him to move out of the shed, from the tree house to the shed, into a beautiful old home there. And it just very wonderfully fixed up. All the fellowship there has worked to make it nice. And he got from his grandmother, or his aunt, his great aunt, I believe, two old pictures of the Virgin Mary and of Joseph. And they're the old of the old school. They're a hundred years old. And they're beautiful. He said, Pastor, I want you to see these pictures. He was so glad that I was in that home. Till I, in fact, in two days' time, I don't think his eyes ever left me one time. Every time I was looking at him, he's looking at me. He could easily play the part of Jesus. That's what his face looks like. His face was like Brian, the man named Brian, who played Jesus. It was innocent. It was beautiful. It was wonderful. I was delighted to learn that his sister works for Mick Statton. We hope she can come be this when Mick comes. And her mother called Washington and said, Tell Mick, tell Mr. Statton, uh, Congressman Statton, that you want to go to Scott, du- Scott Depot with him, honey. We want you down there where God's people are. Yeah. She went and told him, she said, I, I want to go. She's already told him, I want to go uh, that weekend. My brother's life was changed there. How can I tell you all that took place? 
How can I tell you the wonder of, of a man who's so appreciative because he found the kingdom of God he found the evidence of the kingdom of true love in this place. When I called him to the stage that day, you know, I introduced him. I said, and what's your name? He said, Don Swartner. Where are you from? Well, he said, I'm with the Texas group. If you remember, I was totally surprised. But little did I know that God was changing his life. Where did I get this shirt? We went to a restaurant. And when I was in Haiti, I tried to get one like this. Remember? And lo and behold, all the, all the waiters wore this, these shirts. I said, oh, I like that. They heard me. And that night at Bob and Susanna's cabin, that gift came out, this shirt. Somebody went to town and got it for me. So I thought it would be appropriate to wear since I've come home from a missionary journey, you know. We went right from the airplane now when I met them all there and were so surprised we went straight to the I believe it's the Trinity Holy Catholic Church I haven't got that right but it's um, in one of the little villages close to Barley oh I didn't know churches like that were built way out in the Texas plains here's a Gothic church with beautiful windows as beautiful as the old country all in the old style I stepped inside the carpet was green it was perfect for the white of the, of the gothic ceiling it was massive and deep and long it was a beautiful place I found out that Don's great grandparents were Catholics they came from the old country and that was their church just a few, more, just a few down, miles down from the road was Don's house and oh how wonderful it was to get on our knees and pray that God would help, God would help us. I hadn't had much sleep and we went on to the uh, home and um, I laid down. I said, Jesus, if I, if I don't get revived, for I'd had maybe two and a half, maybe three hours sleep. If I don't get revived, Jesus, I won't be able to make it after the cabin where some 20 to 30 people were going to gather and listen to me share. But I slept 40 minutes and when I awoke, it was as if I'd slept all night. And the last of those three nights previous, I'd only slept one. And the other, the other two nights very late. When I got out, Don saw me first. He said, oh, pastor, you look rested. See, he's very keen. You look rested. You look much better. We went out to the cabin that night. It's a very unique cabin. It kind of got a little honeymoon cottage upstairs. It's been, it's kind of elaborate, really. And, uh. Well, it's just, it looks like a Walt Disney place. looks like maybe, maybe Hansel and Gretel live there or somebody. It's very decorated, very spruced up. It's rustic, of course, out on Bob's father's place. Remember Bob, the banker, Susanna's husband? Won't you think back on it a minute? When the Lord revealed to my heart... And Martha was for Terry in Via Jayawada. It started this for Copper's Cove, Texas. And in Copper's Cove, Texas, I ran smack into the banker, Bob. Remember, we had prayed together about what should be for you. Jesus had been so wonderful to help us. By the time we got down to Texas with you, we didn't know. But you see, Bob had sort of avoided the fellowship for years. You know how the devil is. The devil tells you this. The devil tells you that. But at the wedding rehearsal that night, I heard them sing, and I heard gifts, and I heard, I heard a heart, heard an anointing that, uh, well, I wanted them up here for you. You remember? I didn't realize that Jesus had given me favor with Bob. But the next day when I invited him to come, and then he found out that I, I put my, our money where our mouth is. He was ready to make plans to come. And of course, you know the visit. Bob makes plans every year, every October, to come to Scott Depot on his vacation. He's already got his schedule this year. There may be an entourage of 10 to 12. I wouldn't want you to miss. Because if you could have heard the West children play, if you could have heard, if you could have heard them pick the guitars this time, how much better, um, not Richard, but the other one. Doug, how much better Doug is. How wonderful, how wonderful it was when um, Don sang a song that you had him learn and I about fell in the floor. What was it? I want Doris to know. Uh, the eagle's gone. Yeah, the eagle's gone astray. 
See, they pulled so many surprises on me. He started playing that. And they have a backup that sounds as good as the trio behind Bill and the Highlanders when they was here. It, I was so astonished, I didn't know hardly what to think. But boy, Don can play. After Don left here that time, where he walked into the kingdom of God, where he found that Jesus loved him, after he got here that time, he, his daddy had never heard him sing a gospel song. He sang secular songs, and he had, but he composed two songs, two songs for Jesus. When he got back home that day, that Sunday, Tony had Don sing. And in this old, excuse me, dear ones, in this old dried up Methodist church, God came in like in the old days. Don was playing and singing and the Jesus came and Tony had never done, never done like me, you know. See, this hadn't been an ordinary program now. Tony had never done like me. And so Tony said, when Don finished, Leroy, his daddy was there and Betty was there and Grandpa was there and Grandma was there. And Tony just didn't know what to say. So he says, anybody got a thing on their heart? In a Methodist service on Sunday morning? I mean, you know, old-fashioned methods, that's one thing. But today, Mrs. Methods, that's another thing. Especially where they expect everything to go one, two, three. Boy, Leroy shot his hands up. His daddy did. He was crying. He got up. He said, how do you think I feel? My son, I just heard him sing a song about Jesus. I didn't know he knew any songs about Jesus. And he said, and I've got my father and my mother here. He said, this is the greatest day of my life. Hang on. Tony was on his way out right there. That started the trouble. But don't be hurt about it. It must needs be that we go this way. The old rugged cross is forever run, and Tony took up his. But that started the problem. Another time, Tony was having, was having communion, and he got happy. He said, let's just sing Amazing Grace. So he sung it a cappella, and one woman just took off. She wasn't going to have it. Had never done that before. Sing Amazing Grace while you have... Uh, while you have uh, Communion, you see. Now, I don't want you to feel bad about this because Jesus is working out there. Jesus is helping. I wish you'd have heard the banker, 32-year-old banker that loaned us his Ford van, the nicest I've ever been in. And we drove everywhere like a front room on wheels. It's the nicest Ford luxury van I'd ever been in my life. And when I called him and told him that how I thanked him, he said, he said, when you see Reverend Him, tell him I still love him. As a boy, when Brother Ham visited, when you were there, Martha, this Bobby Hill, who's mayor of the town today and owns the Ford Agency, he hear me. He said, tell Brother Ham I love him. I told Brother Ham at 1.30 this morning, he said, son, it touches my heart. He loves me. And he loves me. See, God's got a people out there. And he's working. In fact, percentage-wise, I just don't know who hardly compares with them, except more of God's people in this place or any other place. It was such a privilege, such a wonderful thing. But to make a long story short, on that second day, and it is a longer story than this by far, because there's lots of things, lots of tributaries, lots of things working. You see, when Tony came here, his life changed. They say that if my tapes arrive before Sunday, he preaches my sermon on Sunday. You don't want to be dried up. You don't want to be dried up. You're going to preach my sermons, you know. It's liable to stir things up. It has. Susanna says she's got where she won't give him the tape till Monday because she gives it to him on Saturday. She sure got it on Sunday morning. And she's trying to help him, you know. But he gets to listen to it. He gets to stir. See, he's a great man. He's bishop material. His intellect's way up there. And he's walking with God. I wish you could hear, I wish you could have heard he and his wife. I wish you could have heard the West children sing. I wish you could have heard them sing a cappella, one of the great hymns of the church, just as I was walking in that night. I wish you could have felt the Spirit of God work. I wish you could have, I wish you could have heard Don sing his numbers. I wish you could have heard Bob sing. I wish you could have, I mean, they were all singing from the heart and God would lead and lead and work and then I would share and Jesus would work so wonderfully till I said, Oh God, for six days I've been under great buffeting, but on the seventh day you've lifted it all off Lord for on the seventh day you've given me the assurance that I'm in divine order I knew that because Jesus had witnessed but you know you like to feel it too 
Boy, you labor one day, two days, three days, and the devil roughs you up day and night, day and night, day and night, day and night, until finally on the sixth night, you say, Jesus, well, one more day, Jesus. You told us to stay and go home Wednesday. My Father, help me, I pray. God, could you do something tomorrow that would let me know you're pleased with me? Could you help me, Jesus, some way? Oh, what a day. Oh, what a night. Because that little service with 12 adults was so wonderful that I thought the power of Jesus would fall. Toward the end of the evening, about 11 o'clock, Bob got a song on his heart. He doesn't sing it unless he, he doesn't sing it unless he's with the West kids so he can have the backup of Rosie and Ronnie and of Doug. And of course, Doug does so wonderfully. And of course, his pastor Tony can pick well too. He had them all there. Folks, I want to tell you something. Bob started to sing. Dear God, you've never heard much like in your life. I mean, he sung out of his heart. And we, as soon as he started singing, I pulled back the drape to see if I could see Jesus. I said, now, Jesus, you're either outside that window or right here or right over here. You're somewhere, Jesus. I can feel you while Bob's singing. And I'm telling you, he, oh, he tore loose. It was one of the, I said, Bob, if Jesus could let you sing that when you come up, if you could just, if you could just get loose and sing with all your heart like that. Oh, Bob, it'd be great. See, I've seldom heard anything like it in all the waitings I've been to. As Bob turned loose his soul for God that night. He was so happy. He was so thrilled. Jesus was working in his front room. What a man. He and Tony are the opposite. See, if it hadn't been for Jesus saving me, I wouldn't like Tony at all. Because Tony's a vivacious go-getter on fire. He's a, you know, he's root hog or die all the way. Bob, you know, is a conservative man, quiet, retiring. But see, Jesus got a hold of his heart and he fell in love with his pastor. And he loves him very much. I could tell you many things. It was so great. It was so sweet. It was wonderful. You should have seen Don's daddy over on the floor. Leroy was just to my left, and Betty was right over here, and they're trying to get here as fast as they can get here. Leroy and Betty, whose daughter works for Mick Stanton, and Don, of course, I just shared about a while ago, Leroy cried. He wiped his eyes. He'd get all straightened up, and he'd be boo-hooing again. It just boo-hoo, boo-hoo, boo-hoo. A great man, a wealthy rancher. A Texan filled with Jesus. Oh, Martha, they want, they want me to tell you, never have the blue bonnets been so beautiful. The fields, the fields are carpets of blue. But what I like is where the Indian paintbrushes stick up right in the middle of the blue bonnets. See, there's nothing like it in any state I've ever seen. It's just solid blue in some fields. And you just feel like heaven's landed all over the place. Oh, I just had the greatest time. I just, we went out to Bob's daddy and his mother. What a daddy. He's like my daddy. Son, be home 12 o'clock. One night his car had a flat tire. He didn't wait to finish his tire. Get his tire. He'd be later than 12. He closed his door and locked it. He took off running hard as he could, and he landed just before 12. And because he got in before 12, his dad said, now you can go back and fix your tire. Bob always gets to every place 15 minutes ahead of time or 20 minutes. Always. Because if you had a flat tire, his daddy said, son, why didn't you count on that? Always leaving time to count on a flat. Don't ever be late for anything. Oh, it's tremendous. See, Bob is something. God put he and Suzanne together. It's a miracle. They complement each other just beautifully and perfectly. It's great. And the love they have for me and the love they have for you and the love they have for us is great. Well, just after 11... Carol, I saw her face white. She sings beautifully. I found out her heritage is very holy. I found out she had an anointed grandmother and an anointed mother. She was telling me a little bit about it, and finally she could stand it no longer. She said, Pastor, you know they think I'm their pastor. See, when the tapes come in, Bob's got a duplicator, and he just duplicates, 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 and they just go all over the place. He just sends them out, sends them out, sends them out, and he waits for the next batch, and he duplicates, 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 duplicates. And you know what? Well, I think I felt when, when Ronnie said, Oh, Pastor, just after the midnight hour, and I'm going to tell you something happened before that. Ronnie, Ronnie said, Oh, Pastor, this is our little Catholic girl. She said, Oh, Pastor, could you sing Safe Am I? I said, Safe Am I? 
Oh yeah, we listen to the old thing. When you get to Safe for My, we just jump up and down and say, Oh, listen, they're singing Safe for My, Safe for My. Well, my voice was terrible, but I sung it anyway. I, you know, I said, bust or whatever, I'm going to sing it. I know the words burst, but it's more effective if I say bust. Anyway, Jesus helped us so much. Oh, He helped us so much. It was so, I sung Safe for My, and then Rosie said, Everybody ought to know. Boy, with the guitars a plunking and a planking, we sang, Everybody ought to know who Jesus is. Oh, it was sweet like heaven. But about 30 minutes before that, Carol is about to burst. She said, Oh, I think it's just right. After what you preached about, and I'm going to share it before we go tonight after Sandy sing. After what you preached about, she said, Oh, Pastor Tony, God helped him to write a song for you. Oh, we just can't hardly wait. He prayed and prayed and prayed. And now the, now the music is as beautiful or more beautiful than the words. And as he picked up his guitar, his face white with Shekinah and with love, his wife crying, Leroy and Carol were already crying before he ever got started. But brother, I'm telling you, when this boy started singing this, your brother-in-law went into the awfulest wail I've ever heard, nearly ever heard in my life. I never heard such an agonizing cry. Oh! He just cried and cried. It was a tremendous thing. Had great blessing, but it had great agony. And your, your sister loved him and held him like that. They said he hasn't cried like that since he was here. God did a tremendous work while this great Methodist preacher, and he's a great one. Brother, he's headed for the top. He may be out of the, they may put him in the bushes, but let me tell you something. There'll be an awful dust, uh, dust cloud come out of those bushes, no matter where they put him. He loved Jesus, and he loved me so much, and this is what he began to sing. Before he finished, everyone was in tears, including myself, of course. It's entitled Man of God, and it was written for Oliver Hogue. I'm unworthy, Jesus, but my people understand this. Man of God, I believe in you. I first believe in Jesus. I believe in you too. Sin of God, my heart says yes. You are my brother, I confess. And here's the chorus. Some folks doubt and others spread lies. But you show love, although your heart cries. I can't be in your shoes, but I can walk with you. Man of God, I believe in you. Do you really know what Jesus can do? But I see for sure He lives and works in you. Call of God, your message is true. Man of God, I believe in you. If tomorrow all your friends turn and walk away, if they say you're not God's servant and forget the things you say, I'll still be hanging on among the faithful few because man of God, I believe in you. Some folks doubt and others spread lies. But you show love, although your heart cries. I can't be in your shoes, but I can walk with you. Man of God, I believe in you.